it's Holly Colvig with Wise Owl. Today I want to go over how to clean your Stingray spray gun, the metal pressure cup edition. In this tutorial, I will show you how to disassemble, properly clean the Stingray metal edition gun and to reassemble. Also in this video, we'll show you what to do if you accidentally left paint in your gun overnight or didn't properly clean it thoroughly the last time you used it. Um, so that we will target any potential areas that will have dried on paint and can be clogs, will create clogs later on. So I'm not at my kitchen again. I'm not at my, my sink. I'm um, gonna show you how to do it if you're at a sink, it's a lot easier, remember that. But at the same time, this is what you would want to do if you are having to clean dried on paint in a gun that in your sprayer that was not properly cleaned the last time. Um, because you don't necessarily want all this stuff going down your drain. So let's get started. Right. Just like in my plastic, um, gun version, sprayer version, how to clean it. I have our aluminum casserole dish, a metal paint tray that I like to use as a incline for my aluminum pan, and also an additional um, drip containment, drip, drip tray, which you'll need, especially with the um, materials we're using today. And it also helps keep your pieces. So, you got done, you sprayed, you were so excited, and you're piece after piece, you were just so exhausted, you went inside, got a call maybe, had to feed the kids, had to go around and pick someone up from the school, the bus stop, and you forget to, come to clean your gun. What do you do? Well, I'll show you. All right, first things first, gloves. And on this one, you probably want to double glove, I will double glove because we're going to be using, you'll either be using denatured um, alcohol or acetone. For in this video, I'm gonna use acetone because I have sacrificed my poor little sprayer and, um, with one hour enamel in bone, the color bone. So I can show you how to do this because it, even, it, it's happened to me, um, especially with kids. You get distracted. I'm gonna roll up my sleeves a little more. Um, I do take really well good care of my equipment, especially my sprayers. Um, I was raised, I'm an army brat. I was raised by a command sergeant major and your tools only work as good as you maintain them. That's how I was raised. So that's what I'm going to preach to you guys. Um, but let's show some real world stuff. All right. So my metal spray gun, like I said, well, you'll either need to use denatured alcohol or acetone. Um, they come, you can, you can find them like this at your big box stores. Um, like I said, in this video, we're going to be using acetone. Yes, it's going to be strong fumes. Best way to never have to deal with it is don't let paint dry in your sprayer. Um, make sure you properly maintain it and clean it after every use. Okay, you're going to need paper towels, a glass jar or a metal container to pour your acetone in. Um, do not pour in plastic. And I have some extra water and um, stuff. I have our cleaning kit that I went over in our plastic um, edition cleaning series. And a green scratch white pad, microfiber cloth. And I also want to show you with the metal edition stinger sprayer, you're going to get um, a spanner. This is called a spanner or a wrench. Um, I usually refer to it as a spanner, so I don't want to confuse you. Spanner, e spanner equals wrench. 
and you will get an extra ring um, that goes inside your pressure cup lid and I'll show you that and they will also provide you with this great lubricating oil and this is a good thing to do especially if you're having to use denatured alcohol or acetone um, and ever so just ever few every few um, cleanings you'll want to do that and I'll show you where to put that so we will have that out and ready to use this is just a replacement part for when your other one gets worn out. Sometimes if you're having to use solvents to clean your sprayer, they will deteriorate faster. Alrighty, put that to the side. Alrighty. Let's see. Definitely gonna want to protect your clothing. I'm gonna get our microfiber cloth ready. All right, same thing. You're gonna do the same thing like I did with the plastic. Um, addition, you can go back and watch that video. You're going to want to connect your, sorry if I reach, you're going to want to connect your hose from your sprayer with some Dawn dish soap water in the inside. Pull it back, attach the coupler, and on the metal addition gun, you'll notice that the nozzle is at the bottom of the handle, not up here. You're going to turn on your sprayer and you're going to spray your sudsy water out of your gun out of your sprayer and i always say gun i, I try to remember sprayer but it's a spray gun so sprayer make sure we have our fluid nozzle turned all the way clockwise tight off and then you'll gradually let it off couple your hose and remember you are going to have built up pressure, especially in the metal cup, more so than the plastic cup. You will want to pull back on the handle or the trigger to release that pressure. And do you see how that shows you there's still pressure. You saw the liquid come out. You do not want to open up this yoke style thing, the yoke style lid, because it will, um, it can blow back the contents of the pressure cup in onto you. It will be a blast of air. It can be dangerous. So you'll want to pull back your trigger until all the liquid and the or the pressure is off. That shows you how much pressure is still going. Love how this gun was created. Um, that pressure shows you has plenty to get any of our painting products through it. You can use our stingray sprayer with our primers, our top coats, both our chalk synthesis paint, our one hour enamel, our glazes, and our heavy metals gilding metallic paint. Okay, we're pulling it back and there's no more liquid. I turn my needle fluid nozzle all the way off. Okay, yolk style pressure cup means you'll just pull this off, twist it, and you'll have some liquid come out the bottom. If you didn't spray it all out, this is, I obviously didn't spray it all out. Pull the needle a couple times, I mean the handle a couple times. All right. All right. Look at that. Very rare you'll see my gun. This is dried one hour enamel and bone on our nozzle. We'll go ahead and just place that down right now in our aluminum pan. I'm gonna dump out this extra water because um, I didn't want to take the time to spray it all out. But you will want to do that. You can also, I won't, um, well, actually I will show you, okay. Get out any paint that you can, paper towel, cloth, whatever your preference is. You can see I have, there's dried one hour enamel on the cup and inside the cup. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, poor cup. You also don't want to leave water in these. These are aluminum and sometimes it will cause um, the metal to bubble up. I've had that happen um, before. Okay, so let's take some acetone. 
and we're going to pour just a little in your pressure cup. If you have um, the specific gloves for um, acetone, I would use those. I would be using those, except for my puppies. Found them, but I had them set aside, obviously, for my videos, and took them outside and chewed them. And I don't want to mess up my nails, so that's why I double gloved. Okay, you are going to take your brush, and we are going to just go around, and as best as you can, scrub and get all of the paint off. And we will fast forward this part so you don't have to sit there and watch me scrub it. But I'm gonna go ahead and clean it really, really well. Um, because my poor spray is. You might want to go ahead and dip into the acetone that's in your pressure cup and scrub off as much as you can on the outside of your paint intake tube or straw, as I like to refer to it. Comes off pretty well with acetone. Go back. You don't really ever want to use steel wool, brass, so that you don't etch the aluminum. Now this is the gasket ring that I was telling you that you get extra. And after a while, this will wear down or the solvents can wear it away faster. Very rarely will you have to do solvents. If you listen to my words of advice, um, very rare. Very, very rare. You're gonna have to clean all the dry paint right here. And the reason why that's important is because you want to make sure you have a good seal. I hear my kids laughing outside. It's late, they should be in bed. And they're probably spying on me doing a video. Okay. I don't know why they think it's so hilarious. It's no different than all the YouTube videos that they will spend hours watching, right? Oh, we don't let our kids do TikTok, but um, I've seen some of those TikTok videos. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. All right. Now what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to spray the solvent through your gun just a little bit. You don't want to do too much. If you can go outside, please do that. Much safer. I'm going to put on my respirator because the stuff, when it's finally Blown, it can really get near. Safety first. More important to be safe. That you don't want to mess with that kind of stuff. Okay. Put on my goggles. Remember, take it off. Release the pressure. Do not ever point it toward your face. The reason why I have you spray it through, especially if it's one hour now or a primer, is because it will get through at a higher pressure. Um, around your needle and your spray nozzle and in the hole, the, the hose, holes in your spray cap. Okay. Pull 
circle back on the handle. Yeah, and you can even see there's actually some, it's colored, you can see, you can see the paint. All right, all right, I'm gonna take these off now. Okay. Move our pressure cup to the side for just a moment. You want your a soft, whether it's a cloth that you dedicate. I always just take this styrofoam that we wrap our quartz and our pints in and use it. You want to leave this over the aluminum pan now at all times because any drips. You don't want it to get on your clothing. You don't want it to get on your counters or your floor. You're going to take off your fluid control knob, your spring, pull back on the handle, and gently pull out your needle. The spray needle on the metal edition cup will look different than the plastic one. It's a little bit longer, and there is still I should have showed it to you before. There was a bunch of one hour enamel, um, white, just stuck to this. I mean, it was stuck. Um, and there's some on the tip. So what you're gonna do, I have this little jar, carefully place that in there. So you can start soaking. Then you're gonna disassemble the front. Take off your air cap ring. Check to see if there's any paint. If not, you can move that to the side. Okay, on the air cap, I do, you can see just a little bit, there's still a little bit, this was covered in right here with dried paint. Um, it's come off a little bit. You're gonna put this in your pan. Your metal disc, do not lose that. And then, Pull out the spring. This is where you're going to take your spanner and you have to kind of hold it at an angle. You're going to find two recessed areas on your nozzle that you're going to take this, I believe it's the wider end. And if you kind of hold it at an angle like this, it works perfectly just to loosen it up. Since we are using acetone, I will take off the rubber gasket before I place it in the acetone. Rubber does not like to be soaked in acetone, but can you see all that paint that's stuck inside and on the threads? It is dry. can get it off. It's not wanting to. Oh, well. Okay. We'll just move fast. Put that in there. Okay. We're going to take some of the solvent. And I'll pour the contents into the pan. So they're not the clearest. So I apologize. But I do not want to get sprayed. Okay. Dip and go in and out of that tube. Dip and then you're gonna want to do where the air nozzle screws into it was on the thread so that we, so we know that it's it is in 
the threads also work in, on in the actual sprayer. You really need to make sure you have safety goggles on or a face shield on doing this because this will flick in your eye um, or will flip back on you. It could land in your eye and it will burn. It can cause serious damage. You don't want that. Dip our brush. I'm gonna do the threads on the outside. And I'm sure you guys can see that flicking back. I am glad I have my stuff on. I'm just checking to make sure. And with our plot with your plastic stuff, uh, you want to make sure you rinse it with soapy water. Every once in a while, you don't want the acid to sit on it. Okay. This brush here is great for this. Dip in and get in all around. You want to make sure you, there's no paint left. And it has dissolved it pretty well. I'm not seeing anything left. Make sure you take your gun and you look underneath where you spray the nozzle on because paint will like to hang out there. Okay. Rinse that off in some water. And I would rinse all my tools after all my cleaning brushes afterwards. Grab your disc. Looking good. Let's get some clean water. I'm actually going to use this container. It's usually, I just usually keep my, um, all the cleaning things I use in one of these. I'm going to put some water in there. So after we get done cleaning our pieces, you want to make sure there's no paint. We're going to rinse them with water. Okay. Um, springs, I usually just put in the water. They usually don't need it. If there is paint on them for whatever reason, then I'll, yes, you'll want to use the acetone or the denatured alcohol. Um, our easy green degreaser will also clean off dry paint, but sometimes a one hour enamel if it's been on there a while. I actually let mine stay on for about a week, um, just so I could show you. Because um, troubleshooting is sometimes what we need, and it's easier if you have a video. So, I'm just going to clean my needle now. the tip carefully you could carefully go over that but I would recommend just going with a paper towel it's been soaking in the acetone so it should come off pretty well and I think we are good yep put that in the water all right and I just pour out the liquid to get to my pieces. All right. And brush. Careful. Make sure the four holes beside the main one, the two on the side, that's where the actual air will come through, are completely clean. And I'm getting chunks of uh, paint off right now. Because if the paint, if the air, excuse me, if the air does not come out of those holes properly, it will affect your spray pattern. It will affect the quality of your spray. Um, you'll get some tails, you'll get splatters, you won't out of atomize as well. Little mascara wands, as I like to call them. 
heavy duty. Clean out the little holes, make sure they're really good. Dip and run it through. And let's see. Looks good. Put it in our water. Okay. Now this still has quite a bit of paint on it. Okay. So we're just going to take our brush and scrub it. Please be careful not to get any splatter back in your face. You would not like that. You'll see, look, all right. You see? It's a no-no. No-no! The, but the cleaning brushes that come in a cleaning kit that you can buy um, separately are really quality. Now I can see why this wash won't come off. There's paint stuck inside of it. So I'm just going to soak for a little bit more. My gloves are getting a little soft. Yep, there it goes. Okay, I'm back. I had to get new gloves because those were getting soft and ripping. We're just going back to, you just keep scrubbing that no nozzle until it's clean. So we'll fast forward you so you don't have to sit and watch this. I had, I went and got some of our easy green degreaser and cleaner um, because this, the rubber washer is absolutely crusty. Um, so this stuff works great and I don't want to really use as much, any more denatured alcohol than I need for the acetone. Because it is a plastic rubber piece and it will deteriorate it. Now that we've got all the threads clean, make sure you clean out the inside. Really, really well. And this is why spraying the acetone through the solvent through your sprayer will help because you will get more of it cleaned out that way than trying to dig it out because um, it's a very difficult area to clean, even with the brushes. Find the appropriate size mascara wand brush and clean very well okay put that in the water all right and when i come back i'm going to dispose of the solvent and when i come back we will i'll show you how to run some water you're going to want to run some water through your gun just to get out any remaining solvent that might be in it i'll see you when i get back okay now we're going to add some water to our gun. pressure cup and then let's reassemble it you will not have to disassemble it again after you spray the water so let's go over this your items have been soaking in the water 
you'll want to gently clean off. Remember, always to place your needle on something soft. I like to take my needle out first just so that it doesn't get banged around. When you're reaching for your other stuff. Check that little gasket. It looks good. Okay, so remember, you never want to take out your needle or put your needle back in without the front of your sprayer um, assembled. Because it acts as an extra precautionary safety measure for it. Okay, and this also is where our lubricating oil is going to come into place. You'll just have to poke a very small hole in the tip of your container of lubricating oil. The oil comes with it. You do not have to worry about it. Um, if you put it in just the areas um, that we show you, you won't have to worry about it contaminating your paint. So, first thing you want to do is the rub. And I just put some on a paper towel. You could use a q tip your finger, but this keeps me from getting too much. So just on the outside threads of your nozzle, replace your gasket. Insert your air nozzle. You'll go finger tight. And then with the metal addition, you're going to want to get your spanner. Just like you took it off. And just, just a little quarter snug turn. That's all you want. After you replace your air nozzle, you're going to want to take that same paper towel, maybe a drop or two more. You actually can just put just one drop on the threads where the air cap's going to go. Um, especially since we cleaned with solvent. This area, you want to make sure you keep, um, especially you want this one to make sure you keep it oiled up every so often. Okay. Replace your spring. And then you're going to do your metal, the metal disc. You're going to want the nubs facing you and you also see there's a little metal tip at the top and the bottom that's because on your sprayer there are coordinating notches out that that will line up and sit actually into so sprayer and you'll have to push it down just a tad so it goes in replace your air cap and then you air ring air cap ring. Find it, find it easiest just to kind of, and I have that piece of um, packing foam that I like to lay my gun on just, you know, just so I don't abuse it and scratch it. No, actually kind of helps hold it in place and not slip. Okay, before you tighten your air cap all the way, you want to make sure your air cap is facing up and down and then tighten that way your pattern is not effective okay next on the back part of your needle a little bit of that lube the fat part and then right you don't want to go to the tip with it but right there okay carefully insert it in the back hole go pass through the handle into the nut and into the thing. Press with your finger. Then it's time for the spring. If I can find it. And this also is another area that you'll want to put on the fluid adjust fluid adjustment knob. 
you'll want to make sure you keep lubrication on that once in a while too. But I didn't clean it um, or put in chemicals, so we're good to go. Tighten it all the way. Okay, next, you're gonna wanna reassemble the pressure pot to the sprayer, tighten it up, and you're gonna wanna turn on your turbine and run the water that's inside of your um, pressure cap through your gun. And that's just to remove any residual um, acetone um, that's in there just because that will not play nicely with our paints. So I'll just spray this up um, open it up, dry it out with my microfiber cloth, the pressure pop, and close it away and put it away. And that's how you clean the Metal Edition Stingray Sprayer from YSL. I hope that helped. Any questions, leave us comments, um, and we'd love to help you. Enjoy spraying.